Welcome back to Fast Gadgets. Today we're going to have a little fun and do a 4K render war. So here's the plan. I've got set up one, two, three, four systems. You can see behind me three of them here. I've got my Dell Ryzen 5675 with a Ryzen 7 1700. I've got my Yoga 920 back here, which has in it the 8550 Coffee Lake processor i7 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Right next to it, right here, I've got my MacBook Pro 2017 Entry Level Edition. And on the very right, I have the MacBook Air 2013 edition with an i7, 8 gigabyte of RAM, and a 128 gigabyte SSD. So what we have on each of the systems is a 4K short movie of 2 minutes 4 seconds comprised of 5 clips. They came from my iPhone SE and they were recorded in 4K. They are in the .mov container type. Now what I've noticed since I've been playing around with 4K on the MacBook Pro is that when you're shooting and using the MOV files from the iPhone and then using them on the MacBook Pro, they appear to be faster than my previous 4K test when I was using MP4s that came from a Samsung Galaxy Note 4. So. I did a one minute 4K test on the MacBook Pro and it took about four minutes to render. So my thinking is, looking at some of the testing I've done, the 4K files that are coming from the iPhone for some reason render much, much faster. So now we're gonna actually be able to test that and make sure it wasn't just something that was subjective on my part. So I'm pretty geeked to do this. Let's talk about predictions. Which one do I actually think is gonna win? Believe it or not, I have a suspicion the MacBook Pro 2017 base model is probably going to beat all these computers here. One thing that Caden Live, which is what I'm going to use on the uh, Dell Ryzen and on the Yoga 920, don't do is render super fast. And it's really not a fault of the hardware. So if I used uh, Premiere or something like that, it probably would be much, much faster, but I prefer to use Caden Live for my main editor. And I wanted to have a Linux editor in this particular render war. So we're gonna have a little fun and see which one could actually finish fastest. Before we get started, I'm gonna show you how I set up the short video that we're going to render. So I'll show you how I did it on Caden Live, but it's identical on the two MacBook Pros and the Yoga 920 as well. All right, I'm going to start Caden Live. And what I have here is a project that I created and I actually passed around between the Linux machines. So you can see this line here. I have a basic fade in. I've got part one through five different movies and between each is a dissolve. And then of course at the end I've got another fade out. So very basic but all 4k total time two minutes four seconds now if we go into render settings we are going to render using mp4 the h264 format to match what's going on with the macbook pros so if you look at more options i'm going to go with the standard settings that i usually use which is video quality of 19 lower being better audio 160k I'll leave that setting as usual. And what I typically do when I'm rendering is I set processing threads equal to the number of cores that actually exist in the machine. I found that if you go higher than that with Kden Live, it can actually cause problems. Now, of course, on the Yoga 920, I only have four cores, so I've set proxy clips, which probably has nothing to do with render. This really is the key factor with rendering, but on the Yoga 920, I've set processing threads to four. With Caden Live, it actually does tell me when it's completed rendering how long it took, but that is not the case with iMovie. So we're gonna time the iMovie render 
When they are completed, I'm going to do the same exact render on the MacBook Pro 2017 in Final Cut Pro just to make my Final Cut Pro advocates happy. So let's get started and see what we get. All right, for you it's just been two seconds, for me it's been 24 hours. I found out that in my render testing in Caden Live, I made a fatal mistake which definitely skewed the render test so I had to go back, I had to fix the template that I created for the Yoga 920 and the Dell Ryzen 7 1700 and re-render the files and I'm gonna show you what I did I still can't believe this happened, but essentially, so take a look here. Here's Caden Live, and here is my render test. I've got the five or so files right here, and I've got dissolves between them and fade ins. And you'll notice that when you're using Caden Live, of course, it actually does, when you do dissolves or any type of effect between two videos, you actually do a cut and place the video on the next line. So we've got video one here and video two. And without thinking, and you'll see I've grouped these objects together so I can move them around. I actually had them set like this so that only the top three videos were actually going to render as video. These videos here were going to end up rendering as audio. And so basically what happens if you go over here and we click play, the screen goes black and it skews the render test because it doesn't have to render video here it only has to basically rip the audio out of the video file and therefore makes it faster so let's get to the scores now I'm all done re-rendering I fixed my rookie mistake I was very unhappy that it happened I literally had the video completely done when I found the problem so without further ado let's get to the actual results check this out the macbook pro 2017 as mentioned i was going to go ahead and run final cut pro 10 actually rendered that video in 99 seconds now we know for a fact that final cut pro does do background rendering so as i was putting together the two minute four second test video that i created here in 4k it actually did that background rendering and then brought that video together in just over a minute and 30 seconds i mean that is really truly impressive and we're talking about the 2017 base model now if you go all the way to the other end we've got the yoga 920 which is right back here keeping in mind this particular laptop is running the i7 8550 processor which is very similar to the i5s that are being put in the 2018 refreshed MacBook Pro 13 inches, which have the, I believe it's the 8250 i5. These numbers, are, of course, are in seconds, so less is better. And the Yoga 920 actually fared worse with 9 minutes 48 seconds to render a two minute movie. So, not really the greatest. It actually is, we're looking at basically a, four to one ratio there so it, it's going to take quite a while to render a movie i don't believe i've rendered 4k on that laptop i do know if you look at my lenovo yoga 920 unboxing that it's actually twice as fast as the older yoga 910 so it's much much faster now I normally do 1080p renders and do my videos in 1080p so I really don't have an issue with the Yoga 920. It be, basically does exactly what I need it to. Now if you go down the line, the MacBook Air 2013 with iMovie did 395 seconds which is 3 minutes 41 seconds for a 
4K two-minute video. If you ask me, that's really impressive. We're talking about a 2013 i7 laptop, and yet it is still capable of rendering 4K, and it can do it in just a few minutes. I mean, that is awesome. Now, the Dell Ryzen comes in next at 280 seconds. Now, here's where I was telling you I screwed up my... Uh, template video that I was using to render in 4k I originally got a score of 3 minutes 51 seconds but after redoing the video and fixing it I actually got a score of 4 minutes 40 seconds so you can see why I had to go back and retest it I knew rendering video as audio only is definitely going to speed up the render time so I went back and checked it out so we're looking at about a 2 to 1 ratio when I'm doing 4K on the Dell Ryzen 7. I probably could tweak a little bit more render time out of it. I just haven't worked on it that much with Caden Live. Again, I don't really do a whole lot of 4K, so I don't worry about it. Now, the MacBook Pro 2017 and iMovie, 221 seconds. Excellent score, 3 minutes, 41 seconds. Now, that, of course, was in iMovie, but that's fairly impressive. I, you know... This isn't the best MacBook you can buy. I bought the base level for a reason. It was the least expensive. The only thing that I did with mine was increase to 256 gigabytes. Now, the MacBook Air 2013 in Final Cut Pro, 194 seconds rendering that 2-minute 4K video. I mean, that right there really really impressed me so using Final Cut Pro that MacBook Air literally did its render in 3 minutes 12 seconds so we're looking at less than a 2 to 1 ratio on the length of the video versus the render time I really believe I could easily use this MacBook Air anytime to render 4k video and of course the MacBook Pro doing the best now you have to keep in mind that the 4K video files that I use did come from uh, my iPhone SE and as a result those .mov files do have compression to make them smaller. It's not like I'm dealing with raw footage or 8K footage or anything like that. But it did look really, really crisp, really clear. If you want to get an idea of what it looks like, check out my video that I just released before this one on the MacBook Pro 2017 base model. All the B-roll stuff, the cutaway shots showing the eye candy of the MacBook Pro are actually shot in that 4K video. And of course it was released in 4K and it'll give you an idea. Keeping in mind you've got the compression of the iPhone and then I rendered it which compresses it again. And then of course uploading it to YouTube does a little bit of compression. But they look really good, especially that open shot. Very impressed. I really like the iPhone for shooting video. It looks wonderful. So you might ask, if Final Cut Pro is so good, if this MacBook is so good, why are you using Linux and why are you using Kden Live or as some people call it, Kden Live to edit your videos? Well, it's the editor that I've been using. Before I had the MacBook Pro, I was using Kden Live. Um, I had a regular laptop, so I was using KDN Live under Linux to do editing, and I became very familiar with it. Now, KDN Live is more like Adobe Premiere Pro CC than it is Final Cut Pro. So when I did my test video, I think it was about six months ago with uh, Adobe Premiere, I found that Adobe Premiere was very, very similar in style and features as KD and Live or Kden Live, whichever you want to call it. I felt like I actually liked the features better in Kden Live than I did in Adobe Premiere Pro. For example, some formats it would not accept. I believe MKV and I think MOV. I really don't remember at this point because, of course, it's for professional use. So they're assuming that you're going to be uploading like raw footage or something that's super high quality. But I don't do that. I don't have the best computers and the best cameras. Therefore, I don't have raw formatting on my video. 
and it is very feature rich. There's basically everything in there and then more when you compare it to Adobe Premiere. And of course there would be a learning curve to switch over. In my wildest dreams, if I was editing video professionally outside of YouTube and doing this, say, for customers, I probably would consider use, using Final Cut Pro and having a better MacBook or maybe an iMac. But for me, having the Max is more of a hobby thing. I just enjoy the technology and experimenting and learning about the operating system. So I don't feel like I need to go and get the iMac Pro, for example, or the MacBook Pro 15-inch i9, although I would look at the base model 15-inch and definitely am considering something like that. My goal would be to have one of those and do dual booting and put Linux on it and have Mac OS on it so I could do a little bit of testing and experimentation. I mean, that's what I like to do with technology. I'm sure with the Yoga 920 with the four core Coffee Lake processor i7, if I wanted to run Adobe Premiere, it'd probably do quite well in Windows, but you know, I don't really want to pay the price. I'm, I'm happy with what I have. So that's why I use Caden Live. Yes, it renders slow. It's not going to win awards for its rendering. Now, I've heard some people use their video card to increase render times, and I looked into it, but the process is truly archaic so it would take me quite a bit if ever you have to compile all the source code and set everything up and that doesn't include just Caden Live you also have to compile drivers for it and other elements inside the operating system Linux in this case to get it working and therein lies the benefit of using something like Final Cut Pro or iMovie. It's going to take full advantage of the hardware and that combination of hardware and Final Cut Pro 10, I don't think it's beatable. I don't think even Adobe Premiere can beat it. Yes, you can throw massive hardware at it and you can get very close, but until we get some kind of background rendering that actually utilizes uh, both NVIDIA cards and AMD video cards. I think it's very unlikely any time in the future to see Adobe Premiere Pro beat out Final Cut Pro, at least in the background rendering. I'm not saying it's a better editor or its form or function is worse or better. I'm just saying that combination of hardware and some kind of Mac technology makes that the best combination. And I think I will experiment with Final Cut Pro 10 and start learning a little bit about it and see what I can learn. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was useful for you. If so, consider liking and subscribing. If you really like it, share it. I always appreciate that. If you didn't like it, you know what to do. I think you're going to let me know one way or the other. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time on Fast Gadgets. This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets.